Hi guys. Well, it is another snowy winter night here. First flakes beginning to fall. It is a Saturday night, another exciting snowy Saturday night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And uh Well, what's it going to be today? We're going to dive into our bottomless uh, pit of doom and gloom to see if we can find somebody new at medium.com. I'm enjoying uh, meeting all the new folks at medium.com. And guys, I you know I keep thinking that I that I want to start writing a column for medium.com for something to do with my life, but. The problem is, what's there left to say? It, you know, it's like, good God, uh, how many ways are there to say we are so, uh, you know, sorry. Uh, like, I went on it, what was it? it? There's, like, you go on climate change, and I, I think it says there's 4,500 people on Medium writing about climate change. 4,500. Uh, <laughs> now, I didn't find out how many of them are writing about overpopulation. Maybe I can start a column about uh, overpopulation. But anyway, at uh, some point... Maybe I will. Uh, <laughs> maybe I will take up the pen, but in, right now I'm just enjoying uh, int introducing myself to all of these new people. And this is, I'm assuming, this is a fellow. So many people use initials, and then they put a tiny little picture of themselves. I think that T J. Brereton, T.J. B-R-E-A-R-T-O-N. T.J. has 1.1 thousand followers, including me now. All right, what does T.J. have to say about himself? I am passionate about the environment, plant-based cooking, philosophy, and mental health. I write thriller novels for a living. And he considers himself a climate change <clears throat> writer here on Medium. But in this <clears throat> essay, T.J. Brereton, well, obviously it includes climate change. <clears throat> he is looking at the end of the world as entertainment. And I do hope, <clears throat> I try to make the end of the world entertaining here on Collapse Chronicles. Uh, don't always succeed, but uh, this, this is the greatest uh, show on earth, guys. I mean, what could be more entertaining than the, the you know, than the collapse of a planet? You know, it, it comes around, the apocalypse, what comes around, when was the last one, 66 million years ago? I mean, if, if, if this isn't entertaining... I don't know what is. The end of the world as entertainment. All right, take it away, TJ. It didn't used to be this way. A politician was once electable based on things like erudition, military service, and critical thinking. But since the age of television and now the Internet, the criteria have changed. A politician with some combination of being telegenic, outrageous, and brandable holds the most cards. He or she will command the attention of consumers in the modern attention economy. In his 1984 book, so we're going back uh, 38 years. In his 1984 book, 
titled Amusing Ourselves to Death, author Neil Postman worried about TV channels. He worried about commercials. He worried about things being put together that did not belong, such as a break in war coverage to advertise a shiny new car, a new board game for kids, a delicious before-dinner snack product. He fretted that a person could just switch to a different channel if the State of the Union address wasn't sexy enough, and he worried that good looks were becoming a criteria for leadership, at least that showbiz experience was becoming an asset, and then we elected Ronald Reagan. Actually, I think Ronald Reagan was elected in 1980, four years before amusing ourselves to death. Today, we have a million channels. More, really, they are nearly infinite. Channels doesn't even really mean what it used to. Today, we each have our own entertainment station. We are connoisseurs of entertainment, consumers of copious TV shows, movies, news, YouTube videos. The distinction between each matters less the more we have. We have built what some call an infotainment complex where people can hardly distinguish between reportage and editorializing, between reportage and editorializing fact from opinion. Well, I like to strive, at least here on my YouTube channel, I hope that my editorializing is based on factual reportage, and I'm pretty sure, at least I think, that my opinions are based on verifiable scientific fact that we're doomed. You know, it's not like, it, it, it's not like I just uh, woke up yesterday and understood uh, that we're doomed. This has been the focus of my life since 2008, is, is researching all the ways we're doomed. So I hope that my opinion reflects facts. All right, now I knew he's a climate change writer, so let's get to climate change. Climate change is just another channel another stream, another media product to consume or ignore, agree with or disagree with. In this hyper-reality, the end of the world, the collapse of civilization through climate change becomes another form of entertainment. People who feel it's too dark, too boring, too abstract, or don't quite get it, can just tune out. Of course, there's much more to inaction on climate change. Our political leaders, who, who function increasingly like game show hosts or glorified PR people, will not do anything to threaten economic growth, no matter which side of the aisle and climate change is directly tied to economic growth. Economic growth means state power. To weaken growth is to weaken one's geopolitical power. At least, that's what everyone believes. That's the global economic paradigm, the religion of global capitalism. <clears throat> We could try to force our producers to do some kind of on-demand production to reduce overconsumption and eco ecological overshoot. We could try, but 
even if we succeeded, it would already be too late. And let's face it, the world is not going to stop. We're on track to in increase emissions, consumption, and urbanization. We are growing instead of contracting, barreling ahead instead of slowing down. Take, for instance, the Great Salt Lake. Just recently, I was watching from one of 800 million possible YouTube videos, how this unique body of landlocked salt water is down 40%. I thought it was down more than 40%. Um, and how the salt content is so high that the water is tinged red and there's nothing left living in it. Yet, Ironically, Utah is one of the fastest growing states in the U.S. Presumably, people have fled high-tax California and other areas for more perceived freedom. Then they get to Salt Lake and there is a water tax. Good luck, Mormons, building your desert paradise. But that's how it is. People are running into the burning building, not out of it. We need to be all hands on deck. We should be teaching kids every morning about climate change. Their lives will look nothing like ours. Where they live, what they do for a living, how they make a living, their health, their lifespans, their family options, all of these things are going to be shaped by climate change. Every single aspect of their lives, are we preparing them for that? Mostly, by and large, we're living life as usual. We're watching climate change on the TV. We might switch from a PBS report on the shrinking glaciers and sea level rise to watch a clip from The Late Show or something about how the new Marvel movies suck. I know I do. All we know how to do is consume. It's not our fault. We've been bred this way since World War II, really since the U.S. entered into agreements with much of the world to support them militarily in return for a constant flow of cheap stuff. The world is always changing, but sometimes the old cancers come back. We are, once again, faced with rising inequality, something to rival the feudal system and the fiefdoms of ancient China. A handful of families control most of the wealth in the world. A vast underclass may have been tugged up from the bowels of poverty, and that is a good thing, but this has had disastrous consequences. The planet cannot sustain 8 billion people all driving SUVs with backyard pools and Kentucky bluegrass lawns, yet that is the dream. That is the dream of billions of people still in poverty or just above. The dream of nations who have watched the West enjoy all the spoils for decades and are hungry for their own taste of the good life. Hey, maybe we can just start with some new schools and bridges and roads. It's only fair. What can we do? We can only really watch this play out on TV. We tune into Russia's desperation to regain geopolitical power in a decades-long struggle 
a war that in the meantime is crimping the use of fertilizer and has stifled the export of grain. We are on the brink of several global crop failures. We're in the midst of triggering five major climate tipping points. We're expecting at the very least a reduction in things like wheat and corn. We can expect across the board at minimum a diminishment of the cheap goods and services to which we have become accustomed in the West. And that's just in the short term, together with rising global inequality, the poorer classes will get squeezed out back into poverty again, though of a different sort. The new poverty, the new poverty, there's one for the glossary of the collapse, the new poverty will not look like the same sort of paucity from the Depression era U.S. or even South Sudan today. The new poverty will be having to leave your neighborhood because rich people fleeing climate change are moving in and you can no longer afford it. The new poverty will be one for whom the system simply no longer works. One in which necessary goods are either far too expensive to afford or are simply unavailable. When things like emergency medical care are not the same due to lack of nurses, schools without teachers. We'll watch on our TV screens as protests erupt, as FEMA drops supplies into cities riven with hunger and chaos. We'll watch as the poor and the already disenfranchised are the first to suffer hardest. We'll watch and shake our heads how sad that the people in the southern states are experiencing another devastating hurricane. The Midwest loses more crops as the region is slammed with floods and tornadoes. The western states essentially burn to the ground and the southwest chokes on another stultifying heat wave. We will watch on our screens as people migrate north towards us, where we are running out of our own resources, where we have barely planned for any of this because we've been too busy watching it all happen in between ads for SUVs and prescription drugs betwixt viewings of the Ozark season finale, The Handmaid's Tale, or that adorable Ted Lasso. I'm proud to announce I have no clue who Ted Lasso is or what the Ozark season finale means. Now, The Handmaid's Tale, that is, uh, I think that was from Margaret Atwood and. Uh, the Handmaid's Tale might be worth watching about now. <clears throat> While we watched and waited <coughs> for it all to impact us, well, it's coming. Mass migration, food shortages, sea level rise, and coastal erosion. Even the damn Pentagon warned about this in its quadrennial defense report and the Department of Defense updated its risk analysis. The IPCC was ringing the alarm bell for years. People were writing books called An Inconvenient Apocalypse and The Uninhabitable Earth. Did we read them? Eh, maybe if we felt like it, but we didn't want to be depressed.
the examples of mass climate migrants were there in Europe. Examples of climate gentrification were already showing up in places like Miami, and yet we did nothing. We watched it on TV. Maybe we read about it, or we didn't. We changed the channel to watch an old rerun of Seinfeld instead. We picked up that delicious romance novel. We turned on the football game, grabbed for our bag of snacks, and clipped back the recliner. Ah, that feels better. And, uh, all of this talking for grabbing our bag of snacks and reclining. Man, I just realized I'm down to my last bag of popcorn. I've got one bag of popcorn. It's supposed to be three inches of snow on the ground tomorrow. So I don't know whether I'm going to have any popcorn for the apocalypse uh, tomorrow night or not. But uh, right now... That um, I'm going to get out of the doom and gloom and go back over to Netflix. What is it that I'm watching on Netflix? Oh, uh, the story, I think it's called The Story of Ivory. About uh, all of these, um, this, you know, about how elephants are doomed over on Netflix. I think the title is the... It's, it's about the elephant massacre going on. I think uh, Leonard DiCaprio uh, has his uh, finger in it all. So anyway, I'm going to wrap up the doom and gloom and go spend my Saturday night eating my last bag of popcorn looking at elephants being slaughtered so clueless morons can have their little ivory trinkets. Oh, Jesus. That's my sat snowy Saturday night. What are you doing on this Saturday night? I'm going to go entertain, entertain myself with the end of the elephant world. Get out there, get all of the entertainment out of the collapse of a planet. While you still can. Bye, guys.